We begin our team coverage with Megan. She's live in Oswego. That meeting broke up almost an hour ago now. Megan. Well, Matt, it's been 10 months since 17 year old Jordan Brooks died inside his Palermo home. He had cerebral palsy and he depended on his mother and stepfather to take care of him. The couple was charged criminally in his death last week, and now there are growing calls for accountability for those who were charged with protecting him. Here inside the legislative office building in Oswego County today, this is where that meeting took place, a special meeting with, this, with lawmakers. They gathered to talk about the case going into executive session, but they did promise to find out what went wrong so this doesn't happen to another child. Lawmakers quickly went into executive session to discuss this case behind closed doors. Jordan's death, as you know, in this community and beyond. And now many are calling for accountability, not just for his parents, but for those who were aware of his neglect or should have investigated it. For the first time, Chairman Weatherup is speaking out, telling me that he received a report from the state back on November 9th. He says he's met several times with Stacy Alford, the commissioner of the Oswego County Department of Social Services. Will this happen again? I mean, is this just inevitable? Well, there's our county has, uh, as in many counties in New York, has has many uh, ongoing cases. That's why we have 81 caseworkers that are not all this type of, of case. But uh, I sincerely hope it never happens again. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And what do you say to the people out there who are, are wanting to see some kind of change to ensure? I mean, listen, we saw this right. with Aaron Maxwell. We're seeing this again. Right. We're going to do uh, everything in our power. Um, the money is not an issue with the ledge. Um, we're going to do everything in our power to make sure that it, it doesn't happen again. Should this kid have been in that house, though? But sh should he have been taken out of his house so this couldn't have happened? That's, that's a, a question that I wouldn't necessarily be able to answer. You know, I'm not, uh, I'm not schooled in that kind of stuff, but there is a focus in New York State on keeping the families together. Mm -hmm. So it's very difficult for DSS, as I understand it, to remove a person from a home. Mm -hmm. it's, it's not just a one person, one said, and the kit goes. It's, mm -hmm. it's quite a process. In your estimation, though, did DSS drop the ball here? Do they bear that's, some I, level of responsibility? Yeah, well, that's what we're going to find out. I wouldn't want to say who dropped the ball, um, but we're going to find out. I promise you that. Who dropped the ball? That's the big question here tonight. Who should be held accountable for Jordan Brooks' death? Who had eyes on him in the months leading up to it? Chairman Weatherup says based on his discussions already, there were clearly communication gaps within Oswego County agencies and beyond, and he vows to fix those. He plans to launch an internal investigation to get some answers and try to figure out how this happened to prevent this from happening to another child. No official action, Matt, by the county legislature here today. But as another legislature, a legislator told me here today, if they can't fix this, if they can't do something about this to protect children and prevent this from happening again, they should all be sent home. They called an executive session to go behind closed doors to talk about DSS and the Jordan Brooks investigation. Our Maggie DeRosiers was at that session this afternoon. She joins us with details tonight from Oswego. The meeting regarding the Jordan Brooks investigation was held in executive session, meaning that the media and public couldn't attend. But that didn't stop one Oswego County couple from heading into the chambers prior to the executive session to show that they are concerned citizens who want justice for Jordan. Arlene Platt went to her first legislative session today to hear the discussion regarding Jordan Brooks's death. But she didn't get to hear much as the discussion happened behind closed doors where the media and residents can't listen. Platt hopes significant changes were made tonight despite that. It was horrific. Someone certainly could have saw his condition. Why didn't they do something about it? Someone should be held accountable. Platt says if DSS was doing their job, it shouldn't have been hard to tell that Jordan needed help. She wants to see someone take responsibility for the teen's death and wants to see changes within the county. I would just like to see someone hold someone accountable, not a slap on the hand, not, oh, I know your workload is high. That said, I worked in private industries my whole life. If we didn't do our job, we were done with. We were let go. If you can't do the job for the county, then let someone else replace you. Have some compassion. I took Arlene's concerns and the concerns of many who have contacted us to DSS Commissioner Stacy Albert. Do you have any thoughts on who you think needs to be held accountable? Well, certainly the supervisor of those 
of the DSS and the certified the the child Sorry. protective services. There has to be a supervisor. I mean, we're going to keep asking questions who, until we get answers. She should be held accountable. She's in charge. She was not interested in talking with us tonight. No. Who should be held accountable for this? In a statement today, Commissioner Alvord says she ultimately places the blame of Jordan's death on his mom and stepdad. She does, however, say that her department could have done more in making sure that Jordan's medical needs were met. A letter obtained by NBC3 shows some longtime employees are fed up with conditions at Oswego's Department of Social Services. A senior caseworker with a supervising position in the unit that handles cases involving children with physical disabilities resigned in January, telling investigators why and what they need to do to stop others from following her. Our Connor White has details on that letter. He joins us live in Oswego tonight, too. Connor. Matt, we obtained that letter sent by a senior former caseworker with Oswego Department of Social Services, sent to all 25 of the legislators that were here tonight in executive session, telling them back in January, that's two months ago, that she felt undervalued and unsafe, and that's why she was leaving. In the two months that have passed, one legislator tells me they have not yet had a meeting to address those specific issues. Thursday, legislators discussed the death of Jordan Brooks behind closed doors. There's been a failure. The bodies are piling up. It's a little terrifying. Um, I don't want to fail anyone. I don't want to fail people. Marie Schatt is one of two Democrats on the 25-person legislature. All of them got an email in January from a senior caseworker at DSS, telling her representatives that she was resigning after nearly eight years with the agency, calling conditions unsafe for her co-workers, left to their own devices to visit potentially violent homes, feeling underpaid and undervalued. She says others were resigning or retiring around the same time, meaning six of the eight remaining senior caseworkers had less than a year of experience, telling legislators, if this raises the alarm for you, it should. And if it doesn't, then you should look internally as to why. Has anything been done to address these issues? Not to this point. Legislator Schatz says the county has fully funded DSS, completing the 0.6% increase in local funding the agency asked for last year. Concerned about low wages leading to high turnover. They need more people. They need better wages for retention so that you're not constantly training a workforce. The former senior caseworker telling legislators in January, I urge you to take measures to address the concerns above. Failure to do so will add to staff loss and retention. It is now well documented with recorded meetings that this body is aware of the concerns DSS staff have. The potential for tragedy is present and increasing. This body cannot claim that they were unaware when it strikes. This is a huge failure. The Oswego County budget shows that they have budgeted for around 80 caseworkers with the Department of Social Services. A county spokesperson, however, not able to confirm how many vacancies there are tonight.